This is Sean Allen and I'm just doing a short overview of an instructor's course that I did last night. It's a, a level one instructor's course at Cobra Martial Arts. And we went through uh, three main sections to the course for that night. The first section was to improve our skills as a student. And just quickly, um, basically what we worked on was adding to our ability to be able to defend ourselves. Not only just do we have the blocks and techniques to be able to stop an incoming technique at us, but we worked on evasive movements, evasion of your head, evasion of the body by moving out the way, and footwork to help you not get into too many problems. And we drilled that in like a fun atmosphere where you don't pay too much by making for making a mistake. And at least show the instructors that there is another option to be able to defend yourself apart from the traditional ways that we've been shown. That was part one. Part two was we went through the basics of our instruction on a daily basis when we are in charge of or assisting in classes. Uh, we looked at PCP, praise, correct praise, how to give a person the right feeling after we've corrected an area of low performance. We talked about hopefully doing that in less than 10 seconds so that you can move around to each person in the class or each pair if they're in pairs and see everybody rather than just getting stuck with one person because I know that that's sometimes a challenge when you get to know the students and you end up spending two or three minutes with one person. There are other people who need our valuable time also. We spoke about the ability to be able to explain our techniques in a logical format. We looked at an acronym, a system called DECR, demonstrate, explain, correct, then when they've got it down perfectly, then we repeat. As we're doing that, we talked about if we say to the person we're facing, we'll say, look, throw your left hand, that's my right. We mirror them so it's easy for them to be able to keep up with us, follow us, and get it. And if they're having troubles, then we turn around and we match them so that we're throwing our left with their left and our right with their right, if it's a punch or a kick or whatever. We also talked about the fact that we want to keep every class moving throughout the whole of the 60 minutes. Now, I don't mean necessarily exercising full on, but if it's stretching, it could be focused on a series of techniques, it could be exercising, it could be pad work, it could be anything. The little wording that we used to remember it is zero downtime. Now, zero downtime is practically impossible because there are times that you do need to say to the class, stop, focus on this, watch what we're doing now. But we're trying to keep that time to a minimum. So we nicknamed it zero downtime. Then after we have explained something using DECR, what we do is we have a final method of assessing our ability as an instructor by using what's called the lighthouse effect, where we step back and our gaze swings from one end of the class to the other just to get a general view of how things are going because they may, the whole class may not have got it. Or you may find that the whole class has got it and they need about three or four minutes to, to practice, but one pair over there may not have understood it. So you or an assistant will head over there to, to help them work on their, uh, their area that they need to focus on. Finally, we've got probably the, the most difficult part that I find that I must constantly remind myself all the time is to be able to teach in different ways so that people with different learning methods understand the content in their method they're used to learning from. Some people are auditory, which means they're used to listening to a series of instructions and that's how they take information in. Some people are visual. They need to see you do it so they can imitate it. Some people are kinesthetic, which means they need to actually get in there and try it. They want to be able to, and you'll see them, they'll be moving their elbows. They'll be doing this, which means they're kinesthetic. Some people will be saying, move my head, throw the right. You'll see their mouth moving, which means they're uh, auditory. So we focused on being able to teach with all of those things in mind. And the last thing we talked about was ways to make the class more safe, which means all of us as instructors and assistants, we have to make the class practical 
but we have to make it safe. If it's so safe that no one's ever going to get hurt and there is no fear of danger, we're not preparing our students for the eventuality of a real-life attack. So there must be an element of fear or danger in the class, but we've got to keep it safe. So yes, those two goals are antagonistic, but that's our job as an instructor, is to make it real. So finally, at the end of the class, as you know, we uh, did some work on balance in life. And I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots of what we were talking about, just to remind you that the areas of your life that must stay in balance, and initially you may forget family or finances and overcompensate in one area, and you'll be rewarded by a high level of achievement. But sooner or later, you're gonna to have to pay the piper. So let's have a look at what we did on the board or on the mirror last night. The final 15 minutes of our instructor's session was spent on balance in life. And as you can see by the screenshot of what we discussed on the mirror at Cobra, we, we talked about four areas that we identified anyway of life that we tend to overcompensate occasionally so that we achieve a little bit of success in one particular area. But we find that quite often other areas fall down. So we identified four areas, our health, that of our finances, that of family, and that of anything to do with self, and it might also, the S might also mean spiritual. So if we start with health first of all, what we did was we focused on four areas of our health, four things that we could do and that's signified by those four dots next to the H there. We focused on four things that we could do on a regular basis, four unbroken rules, four things that we could do nearly every day that would contribute towards good health. And it might be 30 minutes of exercise, it could be uh, drinking a litre of water, it could be eating fruit in the morning, it could be a range of things. But of course, these four things are your unbroken rules. I mean, it's great to have a massage once every now and again. It's, it's great to do some weight training. It's great to do a whole variety of things. But what are the four things, your four commandments, if you would put it that way, that you do on a regular basis that contribute towards good health? The next section uh, that, we, that we looked at was that of self. Now, self could be a whole range of things. Quite often we find that if we are focusing our time on everyone else but us, we might be liked by everyone else, but we don't like ourself. And the important thing to remember with this is that if you focus on yourself, you're not selfish. Sometimes you're selfless because the only way you can be a good father or a good friend or a good partner to your wife or husband is by being happy in your own skin first. And so therefore, we also identified four things that you do on a regular basis that contribute to deep internal spiritual happiness. They might be meditating once a day. It could be spending Sunday afternoons having a walk by yourself. It could be doing yoga. It could be doing a variety of things. And remember that you might decide that having a walk on the beach every second day or even in the mornings or whenever it might be once a week is the thing that you're going to do for yourself and that also might be contributing towards your health goals and that's fine. So there are four things that we identified in the area of self, your own internal happiness gauge. Then as we move down to the bottom, we looked at the family one which was the little smiley face down the bottom there. And we identified four things that would keep us happy in our role as a son or daughter to our parents, as a partner to our spouse, as a father to our kids, as a friend to our friends. And we really had to identify what are the four things. And it might be just making regular phone contact with your parents. It might be segregating Saturday afternoon purely for your kids or it could be 
putting aside two nights a week for uh, for your partner. Quite some time ago, I spoke to a friend of mine who'd been married for 20 years to his wife, and I said, "What is your what's your secret?" And he said, "We sit down for a cup of tea every night at 8:30," and that was it. I said, "I said that's it," and he goes, "That's it." Every night, he said, unless we go out, like on a Friday night for dinner, he said, but every night, that's our time. We only sit down for 20 minutes, half an hour, but we always have a cup of tea at 8.30 every night. And his name was Jeff, and I remember him talking about the fact that his marriage was just as good, actually was probably better than when they first got married. So, what are your four commandments for having a good family life? And finally, of course, yes, the area that we tend to get out of balance with, finances what are your four areas within the financial world within your financial thermostat that make sure you are healthy financially what do you do do you save 10 percent of your income uh, once a year do you do a seminar on financial knowledge etc etc so you have to find out what are the four things and the best thing to do with this and for that matter all of the areas is probably to emulate someone else if you're struggling who is successful in that particular area like you might get someone who's financially successful or who's really healthy and find out what they do and emulate that but then to the best of your ability you've got to make it fit in with the rest of your uh, other goals in life hence we called it at the very top of the screen four by four there's four rules for the four areas back to me Thanks very much for attending helps. last night. If you couldn't, I hope this video was helpful and we'll look forward to seeing you at my next session. And to be able to create more balance in their lives. Men in black, 